All right, so yesterday we left off on the uh, supply chain backlog that's happening in the United States of America. This is something that has personally impacted me in a devastating capacity, of course. Uh, I still have yet to receive my Uplift desk, the top of it, rather. Um, I thought that Uplift was uh, manufactured in the United States one month left until and nine, all of its parts were manufactured in the United States. I was wrong, I guess. I don't know what's going on. Did an Updesk warehouse? Uplift. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Do you still debate chatters who are willing to try to get their minds changed? Not necessarily. Maybe sometimes, but not usually. No. Um, anyway, let's, uh, let's start. <laughs> now to something much less exciting. Americans may need to start their holiday shopping early this year because of bottlenecks in the world's supply months, chains. Shipping containers and unloaded ships are jamming up ports, and there is a shortage of truck drivers to get the products out to customers. President Biden is meeting with business executives and port directors today to try to address this problem. Meanwhile, In order to address this problem, they are uh, going they're going to change the Long Beach and Los Angeles ports into 24 hours. Like the California ports are going to be operating 24 hours, seven days a week. Okay. But they already have been, if I'm not mistaken. The White House officially addressed this after this uh, news broke, by the way. In playing um, too. And the reason, the reason why they're doing that is so that like a lot of the backlog of container carrying vessels can come into the ports. But the problem is what's going to happen with overtime pay, hazard pay, a lot of things in situations like this, a lot of workers get abused. Okay. I personally do not give a f uh, about not getting my treats on time or whether there's my desk or not. Obviously there's like life-saving medication and shit too, uh, which should get priority. Um, but, uh, but really ultimately, you know, this has caused we'll the shortage in like months. a lot of the, extremes. the larger items specifically, um, like, you know, couches, whatnot, beds, things like that, that aren't domestically manufactured. Uh, perhaps we should have a little bit more domestic manufacturing that could possibly be a good thing. Who knows? But, um, as, uh, as far as everything else goes, uh, you know, these guys currently, the Stevedores, Longshoremen. What is this? Did you ever see this hilarious clip about you? No. Uh, Stevedores, Longshoremen, truck drivers, and delivery drivers currently have a profound amount of power. Okay? A profound amount of power. I'm not going to look at this clip right now, man. I'm just like, I'm in the middle of something. Um, and and uh, if they are overworked and overstressed, this is an opportunity for them to unionize, strike for better workplace conditions, and uh, all that good stuff. Yeah, so months. anything shows how easily workers can topple the system by not working. By the way, for the record, I mean, not to use this as an opportunity to plug my merch, but my merchandise is domestically manufactured. Everything is done in the United States of America, baby. Good old US of A, union labor, unionized labor, so when my shit comes around and it's going to come around soon, we're going to like, we're going to launch it really soon. Okay. You will be able to get it on a, on a, a simple eight week runway exclusively because the eight week runway is because it's the first ever campaign. So they're like, uh, what is it called? It's like you pre-order it and then they make enough, uh, for the orders. But if it wasn't like that, if they like just blasted it out cause they knew exactly how many people would purchase, um, Normally, you could get it immediately. Wow, Edadio. New merch or the restock? No, all new merch. All new merch, baby. All new merch. That's even worse for you. What? What? Pog, pog, pog hassle. 100% source in the US. Yes, yes. It's fucking all United States. Profits are going to the strike funds. One of the, one of the oh, merchandise, one chat. of the shirts is going to be the unionized tee. That one will have all profits on my end and hopefully all profits... If I can get the company that like does all the work for me on the back end to agree to it, at least on has that slam, product, slam, I hope has uh, slam, has slam, has all slam, has slam, has slam, my profits slam, and their slam. profits together will go to strike funds that we pick. So, <sighs> yeah. Nine, let's go. It will ship internationally as well. Are you going to use the proceeds to get the Lamborghini you deserve? Yes. 
Port operators in America are basically unionized. You are usually grandfathered and in. Getting a job isn't easy. They're generally paid. They're actually paid handsomely. And most of the time, they're actually overpaid for their work. The stevedores are contracted out and usually have weird contract requirements. Example, they contracted an eight-hour bid. So if they take 17 hours to load, unload a vessel, they get paid for 24 hours. Source, this is my job. I don't know if you already do this, but it would be cool if each union involved with making the merch had its symbol put on it. Ajan merch with union symbol on the sleeve would be pretty dope. I don't know if they'd be down to. Hashtag brand risk pepela. Um, we are not doing that. 20. But that does seem like a good idea. But I can't fucking literally change that last second. You know what I mean? It's a cute idea, though. I like it. Maybe on the next one. Anyway, I buy Christmas gifts during the summer. Respect my game. I'll wear a union shirt to an Amazon fulfillment center. Okay, well, don't get fired, brother. Hassle, hassle, hassle. Okay, no, he said the unionized uh, dock workers are overpaid. I don't think he's saying the stevedores are. Well, I guess he technically is. He's saying how the stevedores cheat. Here's some more Bezos money to pay off the Porsche loan. Anyway. Anyway, let's watch. Well, our Weijia Zhang is at the White House for us covering all of it. Weijia, hope you started shopping early. Good morning. Good morning to you, Tony, and good morning to everybody. The administration just announced that several of the companies President Biden is meeting with today, like UPS and FedEx, will be moving to 24-7 operations to try to clear up some well, of that congestion. And two ports in California that handle 40 percent of the country's cargo containers will also open around the clock. But some supply chain experts worry that still won't be enough to get things moving. Shipping delays will result in empty shelves. Carly McGinnis is the COO of a California-based toy company struggling to fulfill some orders because their products are trapped in the port of Long Beach. McGinnis's team considered taking drastic measures to retrieve them. Chartering a helicopter to come and try to pull the container out of the shipyard. Uh, we also rent debated renting a U-Haul to unload it ourselves. Thousands of containers are stuck because the ships transporting them have nowhere to go. It's like taking 10 lanes of freeway traffic and squeezing them into five. Ports across the country are dealing with similar bottlenecks. In March 2020, COVID restrictions caused ports to cut capacity. As the economy rebounds, there's more stuff to import. But on the ground, trucks can't move it fast enough, due in part to, to a driver shortage. The Biden administration is working with states to speed up the process to get trucking licenses out faster. Ryan Peterson, who runs a tech company for Global Logistics, says the help can't come soon enough. How difficult is it to build a new port? Dude, this is not, and I say this with my entire chest, communist China. Do you know how long it would take to facilitate a contract, take the resources and time to even figure out where, uh, engage in the act of purchasing the land? It would take at least like 20 years, okay? It would take like 15 years if we accelerated the process. You literally cannot do that. You cannot just like build a port. Unless it's China. China would be able to build a port in one year. Nine months. No Time joke. You to they would just be like, this is our land other. now. Thank you for cooperation. And then they would be like, they would throw humans at the problem. It'd be like, build a port right now. And then they would drone, uh, they would literally drone shoot it the entire time so they can flex on the timeline too. They'd be like, hey, look at us. We just built a new port in a year, okay? Welcome. I used to they built one here in Pakistan in like two years, jammies, legit. Yeah, though they fucking... Jammies. Yeah, they built 12 hospitals in three months at the start of COVID. Do you guys remember the drone footage of them just like literally building I'm hospitals? I'm like pregnant. in a matter of, of said, bro, seven days, dude. Months. They were just like, come in, open up the land, put the hospital down and be like, all right, we're, we're done here. All right, let's move on to the next city. It was insane. Article on the deaf truck sensor shortage is not a shortage of truck drivers. We're sending truck drivers home because we have trucks down. Thanks for yeah, Selena Gomez, I think, is a is my only, like, either related to a truck driver or literally is a truck driver, but also a Selena Gomez fan. I'm very interested to find out what this person's background is because they've been talking about the deaf sensor, uh, the deaf sensor shortage for, like, a day now. Like, a whole ass day. And I love that. Like, I love... What's going on here? You know what I mean? Hey, chatter girl just told me I look like a worker. Like, I need to understand if like you're, like, I related to a truck driver or, Lamau, I'm a truck driver, gorgeous. too. 
Yeah, no wonder I got fucking long ass community subs in here. Truck drivers are caked, dude. They are caked up as we talked about yesterday. I'm just imagining a truck driver who's a, I work for a construction company. We have four trucks that have been down for over a month. Six this months, is BB. this. I have more like questions. We should move in together and radicalize the children. So you work for a construction company, but you're like a Selena Gomez stan. I love that. Like, so what yeah. are you working on? Are you working out wearing a hard hat, jamming out the Selena f***ing Gomez? You know, you're like, I don't really appreciate the OSHA regulations around not wearing my f***ing AirPods in the uh, in the workplace when I'm, you know, operating tools and shit using like saws and whatnot, because I want to jam out to my goddamn Selena Gomez. You know, I love that. My name comes from CS16. We all had names like this back then. It was Britney Spears. Yeah, sure, buddy. Selena Gomez, music transcends socioeconomic cla uh, lines, you uncultured swine. True. By the way, truckers can and should be socialist. And it's well, uh, heavily, especially in the heavily unionized parts of the trucking sector, trucking they are very well paid. They're also at the heart of like the, the labor union movement, and in, in, especially in like the past couple of decades. The material and parts get Fucking delivered to baby. factory, a factory, so we can manufacture things and manufacture them here, how we move things, how a finished product moves from a factory to a store to your home. And today we have an important announcement that will get things you buy to you, to the shelves faster. I'm joined by the executive director of the ports of Los Angeles and chat. Long Wish Beach, Gene Soroka and, uh, and Mario, Mario Cordono. Uh, I, miss, I apologize. Mario, um, that, uh, and the president of the International Longshoremen's Union, Willie Adams. Los Angeles and Long Beach are home to two of the largest point, ports in America. It's like 70%, and together, isn't it? These ports are among the largest in the world. And the best way to make that point is that 40%, 40% of shipping containers that we import into this country come through these two ports. And today we have some good news we're going to help speed up the delivery of goods all across America. After weeks of negotiation and working with my team and with the major union retailers and freight movers, the ports of Los Angeles, the port of Los Angeles announced today that it's going to be, begin operating 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This follows the port of Long Beach's commitment to 24-7 that it announced just weeks ago. 24-7 system what most of the leading countries in the world already operate on now, except us, until now. This is the first key step toward moving Excuse our entire Ill freight, hassle. transportation, and logistical supply chain nationwide to a 24-7 system. And here's why it matters. Traditionally, our ports have only been open during yeah, the week, MFA Monday through here. Friday, and they're generally closed down at nights and on weekends. By staying open seven days a week, through the night and on the weekends, the port of Los Angeles will open over 60 extra hours a week will be open. In total, that will almost double the number of hours that the port is open for business from earlier this year. That means an increase in the hours for workers yeah, to be moving months. cargo off ships onto trucks and rail cars to get to their destination. And more than that, the night hours are critical for increasing the movement of goods because highways Highways are less and crowded at, evening, at night. In fact, during off-peak hours in Los Angeles, cargo leaves the port at a 25% faster pace than during the day shift. So by increasing the number of late-night hours of operation and opening up <coughs> less crowded hours when the goods can move faster, today's announcement has the potential to be a game-changer. I say potential because all of these goods won't move by themselves. For the uh, bro, for the Biden looks like he's up 24 7, dude. What is going on? They roll him off the adrenochrome schedule for like a little bit, and he just Nothing. looks like absolute death right now. The goods and the freight movers who take the goods from the ships to factories and to stores to step up as well. These provide these private sector companies are the ones that Lankies, hire the trucks and rail cars and Abbey. move the goods. On this score, we have some good news to report as well. Today, Walmart, our nation's largest retailer, 
is committing to go all in on moving this pro its products 24-7 from the ports to their stores nationwide. Specifically, Walmart is committing as much as a 50% increase in the use of off-peak hours People over the next several weeks. Today, said Additionally, Incentives. FedEx and UPS, two of our nation's white. biggest freight movers, are committing today to significantly increase the amount of goods they're moving at night. FedEx and UPS are the shippers for some of our nation's largest stores, but they also ship for tens of thousands of small businesses all across America. Their commitment to go all in on 24-7 operations means that businesses of all sizes will get their goods on shelves faster and more reliably. Accordingly, according to one estimate, together, FedEx and UPS alone move up to 40 percent of packages in America, up to 40 percent. And other companies are stepping up as well. They include Target, Home Depot, and Samsung that have all committed to ramp up their activities to utilize off-peak hours at the ports. So, the commitments being made today are a sign of major progress in moving goods from manufacturers to a store or to your front door. I want to thank my Supply Chain Disruption Task Force, which we set up in June, led by Secretaries Buttigieg, Raimondo, and Vilsack and by my Director of National you, Economic Daddy, Council, I mean, Daddy, Ryan I mean, Deese. Daddy, I want to I thank mean. them for their leadership. And I especially want to thank Joe Porcari. Uh, and uh, I, I think uh, Joe's done one heck of a job, my special envoy specifically on ports, who's been working this issue with all the stakeholders for the past several weeks. I also want to thank the port directors. I want to thank Gene and Mario again and the mayors of Los Angeles and Long Love Beach, you, Mayor Garcetti and Mayor Garcia for their leadership. And uh, I think the private companies that are stepping up, I want to thank them, thank them. But I particularly want to thank labor. Willie Adams Marry of the me. Longshoremen and Warehouses Union, who uh, is here today, the Teamsters, the rail unions from the Brotherhood of Railroad Singlemen, and the International Association of, Mechan of, of Machinists to the American Train Dispatchers Association, to Sheet Metal, Air, and Rail, and Transportation Workers Union, unions. known as SMART. I want to be clear. This is across-the-board commitment to going to 24-7. This is a big first step in speeding up the movement of materials and goods through our supply chain. But now we need the rest of the private sector chain to step up as well. This is not called a supply chain for nothing. This means that terminal operators, railways, trucking companies, shippers, and other retailers as well. Strengthening our supply chain will continue to be my team's focus. If federal support is needed, I will direct all appropriate action. And if the private sector doesn't step up, we're going to call them out and ask them to act. Because our goal is not only to get through this immediate Six bottleneck, months, Pog. but to address the long Bro, if they don't, in our transportation the people who are saying, why is Biden stepping up to fix this? I might add, this is a gigantic, if not the most I think it's very important, important the, problem the, uh, infrastructure he's facing. Fast. Inflation, infrastructure prices fast. skyrocket, people can't get their goods that they paid for. America the will lose their the shit, dude. Changed. Are you kidding me? They will lose their minds. The Everything crisis, falls apart when you can't get your $5 jalapeno poppers. How many times do I have to stress this point? Efficient supply chains leaving no buffer or margin for error when it comes to certain parts arriving just in time is needed to make a final product. And the, our administration, Barack and ours, we, that's where it was just in time was the focus. We didn't have a pandemic and other things at the time. We need to take a longer view, though, that invest in building greater resilience to withstand the kinds of shocks we've seen over and over, year in and year out, whether it's the pandemic, extreme weather, climate change, cyber attacks, or other disruptions. In fact, research tells us that a company can expect to lose over 40% of one year's earnings every 10 years due to supply chain disruptions. A longer term view means we invest in systems that have more time built in and our ability to produce, innovate, and partner with our allies. It also means companies throughout the supply chain, like maritime, air freight, and trucking companies, Poggy reduce wobby. their carbon emissions and help to meet our climate change goals. 
It also means creating and supporting good-paying jobs so folks want to stay in these jobs, so they can build the skills and careers and to make a decent living. It means more opportunities to join a union, especially for truckers. These steps are critical. They allow companies to pivot quickly when a disruption Enjoy hits because here. they've invested in their workers, their workers' skills, and training up front to be able to adapt. We need to invest in making more of our products right here in the United States. Never Four again should our country Thank you at and our economy be unable to make critical products we need because we don't have access to materials to make that product. Never again should we have to rely too heavily on one company or one country or one person in the world, particularly when countries don't share our values when it comes to labor and environmental standards. I've said yeah. before. America, a beacon of labor uh, values. We are America. We still have the most productive workers and the most innovative minds in the world. But the rest of the world is closing in, and we risk losing our edge if we don't step up. In order to be globally competitive... When I think of a country deeply, uh, you know, deeply involved in, in uh, improving the conditions for the working class, I think of the United States of America, a country with a 10% unionization rate that, like, still doesn't have maternal leave uh, by default, federally mandated, you know, that sort of stuff. ...structure and our people with my infrastructure bill and my Build Back Better Act. These bills would transform, transform our ports. There's million, billions of dollars for ports, highways, rail systems that sorely need upgrading and would bring products faster and more efficiently from the factories to the store to your house. Let me be clear. We're proposing to make the biggest investment in ports in our history. The bill would also make investments in our supply chains and manufacturing and strengthening our ability to make more goods from the beginning to end right here in America. The bottom line, we've seen the cost of inaction in the pandemic and the delays and the congestion that affect every American. We see. But it's fully within our capacity to act to make sure it never happens again. It's going to take a little time and that we've unlocked the full might and dynamism of our economy and our people. For the population That's what we're going to do. Chain. Let's go. God bless you all, and may God bless the longshoremen, rail workers, truckers, and all the workers who are keeping our economy going. May God protect our troops. Thank you all so very much. Okay. God bless our troops, the Thevadors and the longshoremen, dude. Um, I'm still missing something though. Why are we leaving having this bottleneck now? Is it because the production is ramping up after the pandemic? I'm low key confused. Can you explain how shit just becomes an issue? Because my immediate reaction is just drive the boat lol. Okay, but like there are a ton of goods on that boat. How are you gonna uh, drop it in there? You know, it's not as easy as like top of the hour ad breaks where I just say, hey, it's top of the fucking hour every hour. There's time for a six second ad break. And like the avoidance in that situation is easy too. like in order to avoid those ads at the top of the hour. This is the first one of the day. All you need to do is subscribe for five dollars a month or for free um, with a Twitch Prime. If you have one and you haven't used one yet, you can literally avoid the ads or um, if you don't want to subscribe, you're like guy well then you can also use an ad block or a vpn keep it up but twitch prime is free if you have stolen someone else's like your wife's boyfriend's amazon prime account and connected to your twitch account you know what i'm saying like here's the ad break now it wasn't a problem i was a truck mechanic for the last four years and work slowed way down when COVID hit yeah complex system where you see the same input leading to longer and longer delays that is a very worrying sign that things are getting worse and worse and worse and with less supply on the shelves, prices are surging. Treasury Secretary so Janet Yellen spoke with CBS Evening News anchor and managing editor Nora O'Donnell. It's the economy in just when we get the pandemic under control, these pressures will uh, mitigate and I believe we'll go back to normal levels. 
Of course, one big question is how is all of this going to impact the holiday shopping season? Now, some companies had the foresight to start bringing things in early, but others that are waiting for inventory cannot guarantee an arrival date. So Ryan Peterson, who we just heard from, says to start shopping now. Nate. Someone just pointed this out, but holy f dude, Gary V. Yeah, Remember, chat, when we looked at Gary V, like, like a couple weeks ago, and he was like, I'm going out and I'm going to every garage sale and I'm buying these dinos for like a dollar. Guess what? It's like seventeen dollars on eBay. That's pure profit, baby. And we laughed at him. We laughed at him because, like, you know, he was uh, probably uh, coming off the heels of like imagining that his family had been murdered. You know what I mean? Turns out he was right, dude. He was right. We laughed at him. And he was right, dude. Maybe I should start imagining that, like, my entire family has been ruthlessly and brutally murdered or something. I know now what it's like to be poor. Slammed into the intro ad, immediately slammed by the top of the hour ad. Oh, shit. Wait, you're subscribed. Why would you see the intro ad or the top of the hour ad? Guys, guys, we got another problem, though. In the treat economy, uh, going forward, the pumpkin shortage is... Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>